everybody, I am Nico D. Today I'm back with the Raspberry Pi 4. So Canonical has released Ubuntu 19.10 for the Raspberry Pi 4. There are some problems, so I will show you how to fix those problems. So for example, the 4 GB model, the USB ports stop working if you use the 4 GB model. But if you limit the RAM to 3 GB, then the USBs work. And also the audio doesn't work right. It is turned off by default, but if you turn it on, you will hear it doesn't work great. So for that, it's best to use an audio adapter, a USB audio adapter. It isn't perfect, I know, but it is ARM64 and it is Ubuntu 19.10. So it comes with the latest software. So for example, Blender 2.80 is installed on it and it works like it should work. On Manjaro, it never works, so it is great. For some people this will be a great distro, for some others this will be nothing. So for me I love Ubuntu, I love working with it. It is very stable and it is very good to do render jobs. That is what I do of course to make these videos for you. So for me Ubuntu is great. So I will show you how to install it. It's a server image so you have to install the desktop yourself. You can choose what desktop you install on it. I choose to install Mati of course because I love Mati. But I will show you how to install Xubuntu or Kubuntu. So I will show you how to install Xubuntu with Mati desktop. And how to configure everything so it will work with every Raspberry Pi. So this works with the Raspberry Pi 3 and 3 Plus. With those there should not be any configuration with the Raspberry Pi 4. The 4 GB you have to configure some things or if you want to use it at 4 GB you can use it via SSH. So if you log in with another computer then you can use your 4 GB it's just the USB ports that stop working. So here we go! So to download Ubuntu it is very simple so I go to Google and I type in Ubuntu 19.10 Raspberry Pi downloads. And here it is. So I download it. And then we burn it to an SD card. So for the people who have the 4 GB model, the first thing we have to do is go to the boot partition. There we open the file userconfig.txt and there we add total-mem equals 3072. This will make sure the USB ports work. This is not necessary for the 2GB version or 1GB version. And to enable the HDMI audio we type dtparam equals audio equals on. As I've said before there are problems with the audio. So it is better to use an external USB audio adapter. So now we can plug in our SD card into our Raspberry Pi 4 and boot. So at the first boot you will see something like this. It is best to wait a little while because a lot of messages will come out. And with me it made it so that it didn't accept my passwords. So to log in the username is Ubuntu. And the password is also Ubuntu. Then it asks for the password, so again Ubuntu. And now two times a new password. So just choose a password and type it two times. Now our user account is made. The first thing we have to do is of course sudo apt update. After that I reboot. And then I do sudo apt upgrade. Here the device tree for the Raspberry Pi 4 has been updated. So I again reboot the Raspberry Pi so these can be applied. Now that is done all we have to do is install the Ubuntu Mati desktop. So to do that just type sudo apt install ubuntu-mati-desktop. 
If you want to install the Xubuntu desktop, you type sudo apt install xubuntu desktop. And for the Lubuntu desktop, you type sudo apt install Lubuntu desktop. After a while you will see this display. This is to select your display manager. I just choose the default display manager, so I just press OK or enter and you just let it install. And when that is done, we again reboot. So when you now boot, you will be greeted with this login screen. So just click on your username, so Ubuntu. And over here there is this button, the config button, so click that. And here you can select what desktop environment you want. So choose Mati and type in your passwords and enter the desktop. So here we are in Mati or Mate or Mate or whatever you want to call it. So the first thing I do is connect my Wi-Fi. I didn't find how to connect your Wi-Fi and the server. So I had to install the desktop with Ethernet. There don't seem to be any tools installed to connect Wi-Fi in the server image. So let's watch the system monitor. So as you see there is only 2.8 GB available. A port has been reserved for the GPU. And there is 1 GB that we cannot use yet. So to improve that a little bit we can install ZRAM. So to do that just type sudo apt install zram-config. The people who follow my channel will know that I like to see my CPU frequency and the temperature. So I add the panel item CPU frequency monitor and also a command item. In the commands I go to preferences and I type this to see my temperature. So now we can see our temperature. And as you can see, our Raspberry Pi is clocked at 1.5 GHz right now. Everybody knows that I like to overclock my Raspberry Pi. So for that I'm gonna install Genie. So sudo apt install Genie. You can use whatever text editor you want. I like to use Genie. Sudo Genie to open it. You have to open it with sudo or else you cannot modify the file that we need to modify. So we go to firmware. And here again we open the file userconfig.txt. And all we have to do is type the overvoltage of 4. You can try an overvoltage of 3 if it's stable. And arm frequency equals 2000. So this is for 2 GHz. If you don't have good cooling then don't go to 2 GHz. Maybe 1.75. Just keep in mind you have to keep your Raspberry Pi under 70 degrees. We do this in userconfig.txt because config.txt can be replaced with an update. So everything you change in there can be undone. But here with this file this cannot be undone. So it's best to use this file for any configurations. So I again rebooted the system. And as you can see now we are clocked at 2 GHz. And we have a swap file now of 1.4 GHz. So we have actual 4.2 GB of usable memory. The next thing you could do is run it from a USB 3 device. I already explained how to do this in the Kali Linux video. So watch that if you want to know how to run it from your USB 3 device. You just have to clone the image to your USB 3 device and change a line in command line.txt. I expect there will be soon an update to fix the 4 GB problem. This should be just a simple patch. Also for the audio there should be a fix in the near future. Check the description for more information about this. So that's it for today. Please subscribe to my channel. I hope you like my video. See you later. Bye.